So SuperTwin project is a research project that uh, uh, is founded by the European Union uh, under the Future Emergent Technologies uh, framework. So this framework is a, a special kind of framework in, in the H2020 program that is specifically devoted to the founding of uh, innovative research lines. So something that there are new ideas and you want to bring those new ideas that still don't have any foundational scientific demonstration today, but you want to bring this technology into the, the market possibly in a shorter framework. The final goal of SuperTween is to develop a new uh, prototype of microscope that is exploiting, instead of the um, normal light, so normal photons, is exploiting the quantum property of, of light using entangled states of photons. So the dream behind this concept is that by so doing we can achieve a much higher uh, resolution. So a microscope that can really uh, feature out uh, detail that are not visible with uh, today existing microscope. To achieve such a, a very challenging goal, uh, SuperTween consists of a consortium of nine European partners that covers different uh, fields in, in the research domain. So we have the end users, so people that are really building microscopes uh, that hopefully can bring this technology into the, into the market. We have experts in the quantum photonics, we have experts in the sensor manufacturing, we have experts in the experimental validation of uh, these technologies, uh, we have experts in the, the uh, detector manufacturing. So there are super twin microscopes which consist of three main uh, blocks, which corresponds to three different challenges eventually. So the main challenge is uh, how can we build a solid state source of entangled photons that will be used to shine the samples that you want to, to monitor. Then you need also a special kind of sensor, so you don't need a standard digital camera, but you need a new generation of sensor that is able to detect such a flux of entangled photons, which means that you need a, a very precise timing stamping uh, resolution of those photons and the capability to detect every single photon that impinge on your sensor. And finally, you need to assemble the system and to process the data that will be generated by the sensor itself to reconstruct the features of the sample that you are uh, monitoring with your microscope. I think that the main uh, breakthrough of the project, there are three of them. So first is that uh, we go beyond the relay resolution uh, limit in imaging and that we're going to achieve by exploring the fact that for cooperated objects the wavelength is in fact defined by the de Broglie wavelength of the packet. So, and then we have to apply uh, the limits of resolution to this much shorter wavelength. Respectively, we expect to achieve much uh, better resolution. That's the first thing. Second thing is uh, that today, to produce uh, entangled photon states, uh, people use very uh, inefficient approach. So they have to take a crystal, send thousands of pulses on it, and then maybe one pulse will result um, production of the uh, B photon. So we are tagging to, uh, to build a solid state source of uh, entangled photons uh, that will produce entangled states in response to each current pulse applied to this source. The third breakthrough that we're targeting in it is the <coughs> uh, uh, we will send this entangled photon wave packets onto a small object and measure the scattered pattern and we'll try to extract information about the object that was illuminated and extract it in such a way that we can uh, resolve feature onto 150 or 50 nanometer scale. Entanglement is a pure quantum property of particles, in our case photons, particles of light. And if you imagine you have two such particles, uh, classically, you can describe each particle by its uh, state, and that's all. So you are happy with, with that kind of description. Now, quantum mechanically, so you have some states where both particles belong to the same quantum or physical state, 
and you need more information to describe it as just the information of the state of each particle individually. And uh, this is so-called an entangled state. And now if you use such kind of light in a microscope, microscope use light so to see images, so if you use such kind of entangled photons, because you have more information uh, hidden in the state compared to just classical light, you can also get more information from the image you get. It means you get a better image, which can, for instance, uh, result, result in a better resolution for, for the image. And this is how entanglement will help us to create a better microscope. project planned as using entangled photon for microscopy, so we need a source, we need detection, and we did at some point also some algorithms to reconstruct uh, the image. So in classical microscopy you have an object, you shine just light on two, and you look with a camera, for instance, what comes out, and this gives you an image of your object. Using entangled photons, because you have more information in those entangled photons as just with classical light, the detector has to be a little bit different too, so we will look at a correlation into the detector. This is something uh, specific for, for that project. And from those different results, from those correlations on the detector, we have to reconstruct the image, and this is the role of the uh, reconstruction algorithm. This is something uh, non-trivial, and the, the idea is to split uh, the project into different sub-parts and to test them independently of each other, more or less. And this is the, therefore, we want to build some first preliminary experiment in order to be able to test both detectors and uh, reconstruction algorithms. So the target is to produce semiconductor source that show super radiance emission and entanglement. Uh, this is a very new device because already very few labs have shown semiconductor source with super radiance and yet there have been no results on super radiant source producing entanglement. We target two semiconductor material, gallium nitride to produce emission at 410 nanometer and gallium arsenide based device to produce emission at 7 180 nanometer. So we are uh, investigating two types of light sources, basically because they differ in terms of color of photons. With gallium arsenide based structures, we get red photons. And with the gallium nitride based structures on which I work, we get blue photons. And basically with blue photons, we can see smaller features on our samples, so we'll get a better uh, resolution, which is of interest for uh, any studies. But it's a much more challenging goal than with gallium arsenide-based structures. An extra challenge when considering gallium nitride-based heterostructures deals with the electrical injection. It's more difficult than with uh, red emitting structures and uh, in particular the family of uh, semiconductors on which I work has led to the discovery to the uh, realization of blue light emitting diodes and those diodes they appear only 20 years ago because electrical injection is a challenging task and uh, the people who were responsible for this discovery were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for that. So now it's something which is better understood, but it's much harder than with gallium arsenide. So these solid state sources being strongly non-classical, they could have a strong potential for uh, future applications related to quantum technologies, in particular for so-called quantum sensing or quantum metrology, they have a strong potential in this regard. And uh, right now, at the European Union level, 
uh, people are considering the implementation of a new flagship project that will deal with uh, quantum technologies. So uh, this project would involve many people across Europe and even worldwide to, to develop quantum technologies that could be uh, helpful for the society. And uh, we really think that our light sources, uh, because of their quantum nature, could be of uh, interest for for the society in the near future. But it's very difficult to foresee a clear uh, application right now. The Super Twin Quantum Image Sensor is a light sensor, which is uh, quite different from the image sensors that we have, for example, in our smartphones and digital cameras. These sensors are meant to record the intensity and color of the light which is scattered back from the objects in the scene. While in Super Twin, the information lies uh, in the relative position of the entangled photons that are scattered back from uh, the target object. There are three things to do here. First, we need to detect the entangled photons individually. Then we need to extract the uh, twins of these entangled photons by uh, exploiting the fact that entangled photons are emitted simultaneously. And then we need to extract the relative positions. Thanks to the CMOS technology, we can integrate all of these functionalities on a single chain. There are several challenges in the design of a super twin CMOS single photon detector. First of all, we need a high spatial resolution and a low pixel pitch. And since we need to include within the pixel the electronics to perform the coincidence detection of entangled photons and uh, achieve at the same time a very high field factor, this is a major challenge. Then we need enhanced sensitivity in the near infrared region because uh, among the sources that we are developing in SuperTwin, there are gallium arsenide sources of entangled photons that generate photons at 800 nanometers. Then we have a timing resolution. Since entangled photons are generated in a, a very short uh, uh, period of time, let's say less than one picosecond, we need to get as much as possible close to this number. Finally, we have uh, crosstalk issues. Crosstalk is a kind of noise which is detrimental for our application because it generates uh, errors that uh, are uh, correlated in time and uh, these make these uh, uh, events undistinguishable from entangled photons. A superconducting nanowire single photon detector is one of the most advanced light sensors that are available with today's technology. I work in single quantum and we are developing these kind of sensors and we are the first company in Europe developing this technology and bringing it to the market. In a few words, what we do is to take a tiny piece of metal and cool it down to very low temperatures. We couple light with optical fibers and when light is absorbed in the metal, the superconductivity is broken. We can observe this transition and detect when a single photon is absorbed. We can do this with very high sensitivity and very high speed, even for a single light particle. High resolution microscopies can be divided into three main techniques, uh, branches. One is uh, electron scanning techniques, like uh, scanning an electron microscope, which require a conductive sample or a metallization of the sample. And it also requires the sample to be introduced into vacuum. Uh, the second branch is uh, scanning probe microscopies, uh, like uh, scanning tunneling microscopy, um, which requires the sample to be conductive, but it also uh, achieves uh, atomic resolution. We have uh, atomic force microscopy, which is uh, an important and widely used uh, microscopy, especially for biological samples. And we have, uh, for example, scanning near-field optical microscope. And the third branch of uh, microscopies is uh, uh, optical microscopy. In this case, the uh, main problem is to achieve a resolution higher than the upper limits, which is uh, half the wavelength. To overcome this, for example, uh, STED technique uh, is to prepare the sample with a fluorescence uh, uh, substance. The super twin uh, microscopy uh, will uh, get the best of all these uh, three branches of techniques uh, because it will achieve a high resolution of tens of nanometers but also with an optical microscope without the need of a sample preparation. So it will get the best of these uh, techniques.
the main challenge that LF Foundry will face uh, to produce uh, the sensor for Super Twin are basically three. The first is to grant a very clean line for silicon production to have the maximum response of our sensor. The second is the uniformity of silicon we will provide. Basically, the center, the edge of the wafer will grant the same sensor performance. Finally, we have to improve at the edge and the limit of technology the performance of the pixel. And in this case, Alefoundry can offer a customized doping profile for the junction and additional modules to optimize the dark current and other noisy factors that are detrimental for the sensor. At the end of the Super Twin project, LA Foundry have in mind to be competitive, more competitive on the market with respect to the concurrent technology. The CMOS-based SPAD is intrinsically more competitive than other technology because on the same chip put the sensor and the analog and digital processing circuitry. So at the end of the project, the CMOS SPAD sensor will be really the key factor for the market in a several application, from the diagnostic like PET, to research like spectroscopy, to astrophysic and biological microarray, without other limitation in a wide range of application where the sensor is needed with the maximum of performance. At the moment, superconducting single photon detectors are used in several applications, from quantum research to advanced spectroscopy. However, the technology is developing rapidly, so what I foresee for the future is that we will see these detectors entering a lot of industrial applications, from telecommunication to information security to space and Earth observation. Within SuperTwin, we will develop a photon number resolving detector. It is a sensor that is able to identify the exact number of photons in an optical pulse. This kind of device is not available on the market, so I'm sure that when the product will be fully developed, we will find a lot of interest from customers all over the world, from a lot of different disciplines in scientific research or industry. So the Super Twin project was uh, started in, on March the 1st, 2016, and today we are here in Trento at the first consortium meeting where all the team is uh, hardly working to define the next steps uh, to reach uh, successfully the target of uh, building such a microscope. We will definitely give you an update within one year from now to monitor where we are and how far we are to reach the final goal of building such a uh, dream of a high-resolution microscope.